All right, now, 2 Thessalonians is really a follow-up epistle to 1 Thessalonians. And it's probably the second epistle that Paul wrote. 1 Thessalonians probably being the first epistle he wrote. Uh, it's probably written about A.D. 53. And he was probably in Corinth when he wrote 2 Thessalonians, Paul was, most likely. Now, let's start with verse 1, and uh, I'm going to pick on Jerry and have him to read that first verse, and we'll start off with it. I get to do the easy one. Carlos, Kai, Seluanos, Kai, Timotheos, K, Ecclesia, Thessalon Ikeon N Theo Patri Humon Kai Curio Iesu Christu Paul and Sylvanus and Timothy to the assembly or church of Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, notice here, Paul and Sylvanius, and uh, they think that Sylvanius may be Silas. And with other information we have, it appears that this is just another name for Silas. I know Ronald Reagan was called Ron Reagan, and some referred to him as Ronnie Reagan. So Ronald, that's my middle name, can be Ron or Ronnie or Ron, Ronald. So different forms of the name. And Sylvanus is probably a variant of the name Silas. That's what Thayer claims. And uh, he claims it's the same man who's called, who in Acts is called Silas. And Timothy or Timotheus, Timothy, and, and these men then address to the church. And church is not a building, it's, it's the people. And it's the called out group of people. And of the Thessalonians in the town of the city of Thessalonica. And notice, in God the Father. So God is, is called the Father. And so we see the fatherhood of God here being laid out for us. And he's the father of us. Now, again, the Muslims have a problem with this. They say, well, God didn't have any children. Well, they're using, they're trying to make it apply to a carnal relationship rather than a spiritual relationship. And so we, we speak of uh, George Washington, the father of our country, don't we? And we're not saying he's the physical father. We're saying, in a sense, he helped start our country. That's all that means. And the father starts a family, and the family comes out of the father and mother. And so that's that's how it's used here. He's the father in the spiritual sense, as we're born again. But also he says, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice, remember, the order of words here is emphasis, emphatic. So he's stressing the lordship of Jesus Christ and uh, first, and that's kurios, kurio, but it's from kurios, which implies a benevolent lord. And Iesu is what? Iesu is what? Savior. Savior. It's defined for us in Matthew 1. That's why I call his name Jesus, for it is he that shall save his people from their sins. And of course, it's from the, it's a variation of the word Joshua. Now, what was Joshua's original name before God changed his name? Hoshea. Hoshea. And so he was Hoshea, and then God changed his name to Joshua. Hoshea means salvation in Hebrew. And Yeshua or Joshua means savior, one who saves. And so Joshua's name was Hoshea and it was changed to Joshua in, uh, in the scriptures. 
and of course that's the Savior. Christu or Christo, Christos is uh, is the form of a nominative case form, and that's one who is anointed. Now in the Old Testament, who was anointed that we know for certain? Kings, prophets, priests. Kings, prophets, and priests. I've always thought judges probably were, but I can't prove it. And so they may have also been anointed. But Jesus is certainly all three. He's king, prophet, and priest. And so that, that implies that. Uh, we, it may be emphasized that one of those three, or maybe two of them, or all three. And again, you need to look for that in the context. Um, and as far as the judgeship of Jesus, he will be judged at the second coming, I believe. But we see the judgeship, and the word judge probably is a little misleading in the book of Judges, but let's not get off into that. All right? Any questions? Good, good rendering there. I translated Paul and Silas and Timothy under the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Pretty much like, the, like Jerry got it there, okay? Right? Now, any questions? Let's try verse two, if we will. <clears throat> Chris, could you read that for us and then translate it for us, please? Yes. Charis, Bumin, Kai, Irene, Apotheo, Petros, Bumon, Kai, Curio, Jesus Christu. Have grace to you and peace from God, Father of us, and Lord Jesus Christ. Say, or if I say our Lord. Okay, from the Lord of us. Uh, yeah, about, yeah. And uh, from the Lord. Right. Okay, from God the Father and Lord. Now we put the word the in there, don't we? But it's not there. But let's go back and kind of look at it. Uh, what was the Greek greeting to someone? What was the word they used? Pete. The Greek was uh, peace, faith, I mean, uh, grace. Grace, favor or grace. And that was the Greek greeting. Now, yeah, and what the Jews was, was shalom. The Jews peace. was shalom, yes. And that would be peace, okay, peace, harmony, concord. So what we see in the New Testament is that he put together both the Greek and the Hebrew greetings greetings in the salutations and so both of those were joined I've always thought that that probably was there to solidify and to unite both Gentiles and Jews uh, circumcision uncircumcision Jew and Gentile and unite them together using both of their greetings together okay so grace to you and peace now, most people are so carnally minded they can't see that this is not talking about cessation of carnal warfare, but it's talking about peace between, perhaps between Jew and Gentile in the church, but certainly between everybody who's in the church and God, because they're now at peace with God, they're no longer enemies of God, they've, they've submitted to his will and been forgiven. Okay. Any questions or comments? Well, this is the grace and the peace that comes from God. Yes. So it's not. God is the source of both those. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's Apo Tehu, which would be from God, he is the source of both grace and peace. It comes from Him. Okay. It's not talking about that from some other yeah. country or something. And the. The word father doesn't have the article. Now, in the last class, we talked about the article a little bit. There was a little bit of discussion about it, and that was the beginning Greek class. And here, the instance, the, the word father doesn't have the article. So it's probably stressing the, the uh, character of a father uh, rather than with the, with the article, it would be specifically uh, a person that is a father. So this is stressing most likely one who has the character. Well, now what does the father do? Well, he 
a true good father will take care of and provide for his family. And so God provides for us. And there's a lesson in that too. The benevolent provider, he's a benevolent provider. And he's a loving provider for his family. They have to have an article, meaning there's only one Father God? Well, it doesn't have to have the article. That's true, because there's only one of them. And also we have another situation. The preposition up here, apo, frequently will be there, and it'll still be definite without the article with the preposition. Okay. So this is kind of a hard one to, to uh, get the thrust of it for certain, to be certain that you got the thrust of it. I do like the character you stressed yeah. out yeah. there. But that's that's my interpretation of it, what it probably is talking about. Thank you. So any question there? There's no article, but it doesn't have to be with the art with the preposition. Frequently, it's still definite. It can't be definite without the article. It's got a preposition. And of course, we've talked about Jesus Christ. Any questions or comments? Anybody? Verse 3, we get away kind of from the introduction now. Paul gives thanks. Now, what have we learned about Greek epistles? What what the function does a prayer play in a Greek epistle? Kind of introduces what the, what the intent is. Kind of introduces know. what the intent is, and we've documented that with documentation of sources. Okay, and uh, we did that in the in the prior epistle, and I think I probably have that documentation, maybe even here. Okay, right. and so let's start here, if you would, James. And you, can we load up, load on you, and let you do verse three up completely? Yes, sir. All right, please. You are resting, O fellow man, to the O Pantote, Peri Humon, Adelphoi, Cathos Axionistine, Hoti Huperal, Hey, Pistis, Humon, Thai. Pleon naze, pleon naze, e agape henos, ekastu panton humon ace alelus, alelus. Um, the way I translated that was, uh, we are obligated to give thanks to God always concerning you, brothers, even as it is deserving, because your faith grows abundantly and your love increases abundantly and the love of each one of you all for one another. Good, good rendering. Now, this binding is kind of interesting. It's like a debt, isn't it? So Paul considered like he had a debt, and, uh, and he had an obligation to give thanks to God for it, always for you. So he was giving thanks and of course god is the recipient now here's an interesting thing here the word god normally would be in the accusative case wouldn't it if it's a recipient of, of the thanks but what we have here that would be the direct object of the verb but in this case it's in the dative instrumental logative form of probably dative case now what, are, what have we learned in the prior lessons of study? Certain types of verbs take their objects in the dative case. That would be verbs of prayer, thanksgiving, so forth. And they would, they would be uh, in that dative case. And so here, this word to give thanks is going to take it in the dative case. So it's, a, it's an indirect object. The thanks is given to God, say, is given to God, okay? And the, the, uh, the debt is owed to God. The debt is owed to God, okay? So that's how you would render it. And that makes good sense in English too, doesn't it? You would have a debt you owe to someone, okay? Question? But it's not by restraint or anything. He's happy to do it. Yeah. I don't know how you bring that in, though. 
Well, but as a context would show that he was happy yeah. to do it. And he, he gives thanks to God always at all times. Now again, that's probably iterative. It's repeating from time to time, okay? And uh, to God, to you. Now, the word to you is not really a good rendering here. Let's look here. Always to you. The King James says for you. Not for concerning you. And it's it's peri, it's, it's uh, concerning or relating to you. For you is better than to you that the American Standard has, I believe. Uh, but concerning you is a real good rendering about you or concerning you. Yeah, it's like a circle around them. I'm just trying to figure out how you, what word you'd use to. How, the word perimeter is a measurement around something. And so peri is around, okay? All right. And of course, he calls them brethren, that is, their fellow Christians, even as it is meat. Now, American Standard says meat. Now, this word meat, M E E T, is an old English word that means suitable. Right? To be fitting. Is that be fitting. Uh, so, actually, it's actually the idea of worthy, it has value. Right? Any questions? Now, how did how did you render that, James? The entire verse? No, oh, the word oxios. Oxio. Oh, uh, deserving. Deserving. That's probably that's probably better than meat. Meat is not a mistranslation. It's just an old word that we don't really use very much. Okay, so it's meat is suitable. Deserving, brethren, even as it is deserving. And let's go back now for that. Okay, your faith. Now, notice it has the article, right? It's from patho, which is to be persuaded. So it's your faith, you persuaded, groweth exceedingly. So it abounds. It increases beyond measure. Okay. The word's only found here, but it has the word, what we get our English word hyper from it, from this hooper. Okay. To measure and grow exceed. And the love of each one of you. So the love of each one of you does what? It abounds. It abounds. So it abounds. It increases. It's been increasing. Well, now, that's a good thing, because love is the foundation of the, all of God's word. Love God, love your neighbor. And so the love toward one another, this would be, now, one another, what kind of a, others is this talking about? Yeah, those of the same nature. I lay those, I lay on, I lay those, those, and it's the, those of the same nature. So when love is growing, that's a good thing. And Paul was saying that. Any questions? Okay. Sorry. All right, verse four. Back to Jerry. Stay in us, I choose in the men, egg, cock, us, they, her thigh, in case. Uh, Ecclesias to Theu, Huper Chase, uh, Hupomones, uh, Humon, Kai, Christeos, in Posse, Tois, tois uh, Diog, Diog Mois, Humon, Kai, Chase, uh, Philip Sisson, Essen, uh, Ace, no, it's Ice, uh, Onik, S. They wasn't very good, but nice. so that we ourselves boast of you in the assemblies of God for or because of your endurance and your faith in all your persecutions and the tribulations which you. Uh, patiently endure. Okay. 
so that we so this is the consequence say eh? we ourselves glory the glory of what we've done but what concerning you we, we glory in what concerning you're your endurance we're happy because we've been delighted in, you know, in the churches of god right? now then here the word church is referred to the churches of god jesus is god this still could be jesus could be God the Father. We almost always assume it's Father, but it could be Jesus as well. For your patience. Now, the American Standard has patience. Okay? King James does too. Now, hupo bone is to bear under something. Right? When we look at this in just a minute, just a little more. And not only your patience, but Kai, your faith in all your persecutions. So it required faith to endure the persecutions they were enduring. Now, are we persecuted today? Yeah, we probably are. Probably not like they were. But not like they were. Okay. And so you may you may not get an investment on job, or you may be kind of an outcast because you're a Christian. Uh, it may happen, but we're not being put in prison right now and being killed and beaten and so forth like they were. So we're not in their category. <laughs> we may suffer a little slights here and there, but not what they did to suffer. And the afflictions, now that's the pressing, uh, something like you put someone in a narrow place and put pressure on them. They would actually put uh, weights on top of people's chest, like rocks and stones, to make it hard for them to breathe. And that would be harder and harder. The muscles to breathe then would grow tired quicker. I put tribulation, but there's also some other things that were going on during that period of time. There were earthquakes in that area too. Yeah. That were um, kind of. Well, they were mostly over in the other side in the Turkey area, but still, all that region was a little unstable. And so, you know, there could there could have been other things they were enduring other than just straight persecutions here, too. All right. <clears throat> this is to you endure is from Anna and Echo. And so, that's to have up. Uh, so yeah, you, are, uh, you are bearing up, but I put patiently endure instead. Patiently endure, but bearing up is real good rendering. Bear up under it. As Mary said, both have what you endure. All right, anything to add there, James? I'm not trying to have so your lesson here. Uh, oh, no, Jerry just wanted to translate it. That wasn't. Yes, sir, you can have so mine. That was fine. All right. I did translate. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I did translate the N as among the churches of Christ, a God. Okay. Among all your persecutions, or among no, the glory, churches. glorying in you among the churches of God. Yeah. If you notice, notice how I rendered it as a footnote. Minds think the same way, don't they? <laughs> but you must be talking about you and Jerry. But I have a footnote here of, of the word in, as, and uh, I've translated the footnote, footnote number four, that's a, or among the churches. All right. Any questions? Jerry, you were last, I think. Mm -hmm. Chris, could you do verse five for us? Yes. In the Gima Tes Decaeus Christus to Theu Es to Cata Zio Thenae Omas Tes Basilius to Theu Huper Es Cae Pasecti Eti. All right, I have, uh, this is, I added evidence, the righteous 
judgment of the God unto uh, to be uh, worthy, accounted worthy to you, the kingdom of God, for which uh, also you suffer. So what is the uh, this is part come in? I never figured I added, that out. The beginning, I added that. Yeah. Was I just evidence? Put, I left a question mark, but I got a token of the righteous judgment of God, and that token is that you might be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffered. But I couldn't figure out how would you start that out without well, adding words. King James at American Standard, if they had which is in italics. Well, I know, but uh, <laughs> I saw token look like a good one too when I was looking at it. That looked like a good way not to add words. Okay. I think which is is probably implied by the structure. It's no, I guess it, um, just kind of the way they would talk. We put the word which is. The manifest token, that word's only found in this one passage, not found anywhere else in the Bible. But it is from Dake Numi, but it's an emphatic form. It has a preposition in with it. So it's more emphatic. Take Numi is found several times. But manifest seems like it's revealing. Well, that's not in that word. Yeah. I mean, um, unless manifest is being used as a bunch of it or something, but usually manifest is word for revealing or seeing something that's being shown to you. Well, Thayer defines it as token, evidence, or proof. <clears throat> well, those are the words I used, and then I chose token out from those. But, Uh, that's real clear, say, it's manifest. Of what? What does it manifest? What does it make clear? The righteous judgment of God. The righteous judgment of God. And notice, it has the article with the word God. It's probably referring, when it has the article with God, it's almost always referring to the true God, not a false God, not a, not a little g for the God. Ace to plus the infinitive. Now, what's that? Could be a purpose or a result. I think it's probably a result here. So what we see here, we see ace to, and I'll highlight it up here, where my mouse is, and that's an infinitive. So, you know, it, with the result, see, the result is, Right. It you to the end of the result. It's you may, it could be purpose. So, purpose or result. You may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. I think it's a result. The result is you're counted worthy because you stood stood steadfast and remained faithful and you continue to love your brethren. Okay. Counted worthy. Now then that's from Oxio O. If you look here, I'll put my mouse on it. Oxio, -o, that's to be worthy. That's a verb, of course, in kata. And so that could be used in the distributive sense of accounting something. All right? Accounted worthy of, of the kingdom. Yeah, accounted worthy of the kingdom. So the persecutions and tribulations are the manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Because if they wouldn't have been, if God didn't consider them worthy of, of the kingdom, they wouldn't have been suffering. Yeah. Is that kind of what that? Probably. Uh, which, of course, that has a rough reading, ice, ice, right? But that's just a pronoun, relative pronoun. And so, who or which or what, which you also suffer, or which you also suffer. You're suffering for the kingdom, see? That's, it. That's why you're suffering. All right. Any questions? Now, again, that is uh, in the uh, present tense, so it's uh, repeatedly suffering. It wasn't just one time thing. Could be iterative from time to time. See? Any questions? I do have a comment. Yes. 
I also understood it as a result. And so I translated it as in order for you to be considered worthy of the kingdom of God. Okay. That, and that would be fine. I translated it with the result that you may be counted worthy. Okay. That, and, and the other thing I would comment on, uh, this gets to the general theme of translation. Uh, I lean toward trying to translate what's there without working something in there that, that isn't. Uh, in the case of manifest token, when's the last time you've ever heard that in general conversation? And if I say that to somebody, even in the church, would they know what I'm talking about? I don't know whether they would or not, might not. And so is it better to translate exactly what's there and let the people study and learn on their own what the meaning is? Might be, or that's, that's the purpose of translation, is. But if you put clear evidence, then then they would understand that, and it's also like legal way of translating it. It's in the it's yeah. in the word itself, the token evidence or or uh, proof. Yeah, I, I use the word evidence when I was translating, but yeah, you know, I just I. Manifest token, as I saw it, I thought, wow, when, when have I ever heard that used? Okay, well, that gets way back to the 19th century, manifest destiny. Uh, true enough. <laughs> so, and I'm old enough to remember that. Oh, you are? Okay. <laughs> sure. All right, well, sorry, please continue. I, my father was born in the 19th century, okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yesterday was his birthday. He'd be, he would have been 123 years old if he were alive. Wow. All right. I forgot who read last. Chris, did you? James, can you take verse six for us, please? Yes, sir. Hyper dikaion para feo antapodunai tois. Uh, Thalibusin, humas, Thalibsin. And I translated that since it is righteous for God to repay affliction to the ones afflicting you. All right. Recompense, recompense affliction to those that afflict you, the American Standard has. And of course, the problem in King James has recompense tribulation to those that trouble you. People don't get the idea that these, the word trouble and afflict are from the same root word. Okay? Which is where the payback comes yeah. from. Yeah. So it's the same root word. And the American Standard makes them both of them affliction, afflict and affliction, which is a good rendering. How did you do that now, there, James? So go, go through it again for us. All right. Since it is righteous for God to repay affliction, to the ones afflicting you. Yeah, that's 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 pretty good. Pretty better. I kind of reversed the order of the things, but it's the same, almost same word. Since indeed it is righteousness from God to recompense the ones afflicting you with affliction. Now let me point out something that I'm kind of derelict in. I've gotten over my head with other work. And the particle epsilon iota is F. And that particle, and I'll highlight it over here so you can see it's a separate word. This assumes that there's two Fs, epsilon iota and epsilon alpha nu. And epsilon iota is a more certain if, whereas epsilon alpha nu is a an iffy if, okay? And so we get back to there's four classes of statements, first, second, third, and fourth class conditional sentences. But epsilon iota will go with the first two classes normally. Okay? So this is something that's more certain. If so, be that it is a righteous thing. Well, there's no doubt it's a righteous thing. If God does it, it's righteous. See? So that, that fits with epsilon iota, say, rather than aon. Right. Hyper 
and that's from Perry. If concerning uh, around, see, if on the whole, thing is assumed to be uh, whether rightly or wrong is left to, to doubt. So it's assumed to be true, and the context has to tell you whether it really is true. But the assumption is made by the writer that this is true. Well, I think it has to be true from other scripture. We know that God is righteous. It's a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to those that cause you tribulation. Okay? Or affliction for those that afflict you. And that's a, that's a fair punishment. Uh, so for us to be, to be given what we give to others. Okay. It's interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I thought you'd finished. My apologies. It's all right. I was going to say it's interesting that we're, not, we're told not to return evil for evil. That God reserves judgment for himself because his judgment is perfect. Where in our case, we would make mistakes in executing our own judgment. Yes, I think that's, I think you got it down real, real good there. That's correct. I agree. And we wouldn't know if they're going to actually turn around and, and come back and God will do it at the right time if they don't yes. repent. And if we try to do it, we could jump the gun. You know, so. This recompense is from three words. It's anti and uh, apo, and it's from didomi to give. And so uh, that's the, the idea of recompensing. Okay, requite. Right? You know, require or recompense affliction to those who afflict, to the ones afflicting. To them that afflict is a participle, was an article. So it's, it's functioning as the, to the ones afflicting you, get, giving you affliction. The righteous God will render to each according to his deeds at the proper time. Okay. Right. That may be at the day of judgment. It may be in this life. But we know it definitely will occur on the day of judgment. Okay. Not long after this, it probably occurred at AD 70, too. Yeah. But of course, these being uh, punished, uh, persecuted them might have been Jews. Could have been very easily. And many of the Jews that were evil were drawn back to Jerusalem in this mad, crazy, foolish rebellion against the Romans. The Romans were just too powerful a nation to, for them to overcome. And God wasn't with them. Now, if God had been with them, they could have overcome the Romans. But God wasn't with them because they were wicked. Okay. Questions. One other aspect of this, I think, it relates to that we're to love our enemies so such that they are without excuse when the judgment comes. Right. And we didn't return evil for evil. We waited on God to recompense. Exactly. Yep. Right. Uh, James, you did the last one, didn't you? Yes, sir. Gary, can you do verse 7? Kai humin toys, libo minos, minois, onesten, meth, hemon, en, te, apo, ka, lup, se, to, Kuriu, Yesu, Ap, Ap, well, I should put that together, Ap, Usanu, uh, Met Ag, Angelon, uh, Duna, Males, Atu, that's it. Um, and to you, the ones with afflictions, rest with us. Uh, in or at the resurrection of the Lord Jesus from heaven, on well, the revelation of the Lord Jesus from heaven with his mighty angels. I went ahead and added the first three words in the verse 8 in Puri. Logos. Logos. In a flame of fire? In a flame of fire. 
right. Well, that's why that was together, but then it was over there too. So I thought, well, I, I must have done something wrong when I. Well, my battery is about to give out on me. It's got four or five minutes left, so. That's uh, okay. We have two. Yeah, well, that's about all we got left here. Okay. And to you that are afflicted, rest with us. Now, rest, rest is what? What Should... speech is it? Oh. Now. Or, uh... I find it again. Noun. It's a noun. Huh. Not a verb. And it's read by most people as a verb. But it's a noun. So it's a state of rest. It's not necessarily cessation. But you think of it like this. Do we have a Sabbath rest waiting for us? That's heaven, isn't it? Okay. You that are afflicted, rest. Okay. You have this rest. You have this uh, sabbaton is Sabbath or rest. And when will that rest come? At when what? Jesus uh, is revealed with. Uh, with uh, the, the mighty angels at the revelation of the Lord Jesus, say from yeah. heaven with the angels, his angels in power, in flaming fire. Now, that doesn't sound that sounds almost like the second coming to me. What do you think? Language like that is used in Revelation yeah. of the 87 and 2, though, so yeah. it's really not totally so, clear. But we have here, this is punishment. So we find here that the Revelation, the revealing, the uncovering, Jesus was proven to be at the same coming, but he also was in 8070 as well, but right here. I went ahead and translated verse 7 this way into you. The ones that are being afflicted rest with us at the revelation of the Lord Jesus from heaven with the angels of his power in flaming fire. I went ahead and put that with it. Make it. And I originally, I put down probably 8070 because the angels in flaming fire is almost always uh, God's punishment. The angels doing, you know, like when they did it in Daniel, the book of Daniel, or the book of when Ezekiel's writings and stuff. When, so they would, that's what they would do. That was their, their project. And so I, it just told, said to me, punishment yeah. from God. Well, it's punishment. But no the people, would they really get the rest, the nanotype type rest until the second coming? That, that's so I, I have a little issue either way. Well, I went ahead and take it as the second coming is what I take it as. But, um, if, this, if the revealing of the second coming, <coughs> the fire doesn't start until the judgment day, which is probably comes with it at the same time almost. But, well, I, I, that's my issue. I always wrestle with silly things like that. Sometimes. I think we're going to have to call a halt. Okay, I'm sorry. When we start with verse 8 next week, we'll start with verse 8. My computer's about to, the battery's about to go down. Right. Well, it's nearly time anyway. Thank you, sir.